Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot here with day one of Nano Vlomo or whatever we're calling this vlogging for 30 days because we are not writers, we are vloggers. Um, so this is, I think, our fourth day of Sasquatch, which is a little invitation game day thing in Seattle. Uh, it's really fun. It's my first year doing it, and overwhelmingly so. People have been really kind and welcoming, and really everywhere you go in this little ballroom, people are like, oh, do you want to play a game? Do you want to sit down? Do you want me to teach you this game? Would you like to teach me this game? And it's completely opposite from some of my experiences with things like Gen Con or Essen, where people are friendly, but you get to drag that kind of interaction out of them. And in this case, because it's invites only to friends, you always know someone involved. And so it, it does give you kind of that personal first step. And they just happen to have grabbed a whole bunch of really cool people. So there's maybe like a hundred people there. And so Yesterday we got a lot of games in. We we spent a, a, a good chunk of the day and night there. Um, we started out with some less than awesome. It was a it was like Cocker Lock and Poker, but it was their new one. It was like Cocker Lock and Dance, and but unfortunately it was a party game where you have to do like repetitive dance movements, and so not the wonderful kind of fun bluffing game we expected. But we still had fun, and the group that we played with was really nice. Uh, some of the bigger, better stuff we got into yesterday, we got Stouffer Dynasty, which is Andreas Stedding. I'm not sure that's how you pronounce his name, but he designed Hansa Teutonica. And so this is a really smart, classic, very low luck driven board game. Um, unfortunately, I had a good teacher, it was Seth Jaffe, but um, about halfway through the game, maybe I figured out kind of what I would want to do on a given turn. That's kind of my way. It takes me about a game to really get all the rules that were given to me and kind of put them in place unless I've read the rule book. So um, really smart. I look forward to my next game of that, and I'm really, really excited to have it. I'm kind of bummed I don't already own it. Um, that was a really fun time. We played some other games with that same group. We played Spyfall, which was a really lame little storytelling game, and it's probably not as lame as I'm making it, but I just don't like storytelling games, and uh, we played Lords of Zidit, which is the, um, it's the same world as Seasons and Dixit, but it is a very different little pre-programming game, which I actually don't own a pre-programming game that I like, so I'm excited to give this one a couple more tries. My thought is that it might be too light, so you have uh, threat disks and uh, recruitment disks, and they kind of populate the board non-randomly, but um, you kind of see them coming a few turns ahead. And recruitment discs come out and get populated with the different levels of dudes. So you start at like peasants and you can get all the way up to wizard, but you have to do them in order. So if I'm the first person to recruit from a disc, I get the lowest and so on and so forth. And the threats require some of those recruits to kill and give you rewards. The scoring is what was different about the game, so when you get rewards, you get to choose two of three types. So you can take uh, harps, uh, towers, and uh, money. At the beginning of the game, you take the three different types, and you shuffle them up, and you say, okay, this game, harps, then money, then guard, towers. And the way it'll work is that the, the first one you choose, so if it was harps, you would say, who has the least points in harps at the board? They're out, so they don't even get to go to the next round. And then you go to uh, money, and you say, who's got the least in money? And that person's out, and then so by the time you get to the third type, you only have two people left. In a five-player game, the first one would knock out two players. Um, it's an interesting way of saying that you have to do a little bit of everything. Uh, that, that was a very cool game that we got to play. Um, I think Greenland was yesterday. I'm having a little trouble remembering which day was what. But uh, Greenland is a Phil Eklund card game for... It says two to three players, but it's really designed for three because it has three asymmetrical factions. And so we gave this a go on the beginner's rules because Phil Eklund rulebook and didn't my brain hurt. But uh, it, it's interesting. You all control a faction. It's very historically accurate about Greenland. I don't know that much about the history of Greenland, so maybe I should brush up. But um, the basic idea is that you go out and you try and hunt for, for game and trophies. Uh, and if you are a polytheist society by the end of the game, your your 
trophy kills still count, and if you have converted yourself over to monotheism, then what you care about is excess resources like ore or ivory. Um, there's also an element of the game that once I become a monotheistic society, I start trouncing through the forest trying to uh, force the other players to become monotheistic so that I can get points by having influence with them. And the polytheistic side is trying to uh, get rid of that and resist changing their ways, and it all comes off as very weird and very appropriate to Phil Ackland. Um, so before he's done uh, High Frontier, which was super sciency and space accurate, mining water, um, and he did Pax Porphyria and Bios Megafauna, and the guy just gets these really cool, crazy ideas and builds a board game, but he forgets that board gamers are generally used to a certain kind of level of board game rules that they can follow and play a game and enjoy it the first time, you will never get that from a Phil Eklund. Uh, we only played the beginner rules, so we lost, I think, a lot of the player interaction in not being able to domesticate animals or have inventions. So I do think there's probably in my future one more play of the game. I don't think there's a whole lot more than one more play of the game, but you never know. Maybe it'll be my favorite three-player game ever. Who knows? I still haven't tried Trieste, and uh, I still haven't tried Chimera, so there's a lot of three-player card games I probably need to get my hands on. Uh, other than that, today my goal is probably Zanguo. Um, I think it is one of the heavy games I do have coming in, in stock. I, I feel a little bad kind of playing things I know I'm going to have within a month. So I've been resisting Kanban and Zanguo. Uh, but you never know. I think it would it might be nice to just sit at the table and play something nice and heavy. Um, I know I'm forgetting something I played yesterday, but I'm sure I'll come back to me and I'll just have to vlog about it tomorrow because apparently I have 29 more days of this or however many days are in November. Yeah, 29. So uh, that's all for now, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!